Hey everyone, my name's Drew and we're here and let's be honest, somebody's gonna watch this. This is a gosh dang Kendrick release weekend. I'm not in the future, I don't know what it's gonna sound like. You guys tell me what your favorite tracks are. I'll find out in a couple days, let's talk about it. Anyway, we're here, some Pokemon are on the screen. So let's talk about it. This is a team that originally Kelly drafted and I talked a lot about how I believe that Pinsir single-handedly could beat his team. And the team was taken over, unfortunately. There were some transactions made, I was not confident, but then I kind of thought about it again, and I kind of still think that Pinsir could single-handedly take, take this team down. So a lot of things came to mind in team building, and basically, this man doesn't have any real Earthquake resists, so I'm going to try to take advantage of that with webs, plus Scarfed Sandslash and Scarfed Pinsir, and really try to tear through the team a little bit. Every other mod on the team is really meant to just facilitate those two just taking over in the endgame and doing what they need to do. Okay, also, this match was played under really pretty terrible conditions we were supposed to play at a certain time cherry wanted to push back a little bit i had zero problems i'm not blaming you at all i agree to it 100 in, in good faith because we did push back a little i was very tired it just all kind of hit me all at once i fell asleep i woke up and i did not want to get out of bed but i forced myself out of bed to play this game i was not in a proper headspace to play this game a lot happened all at once when i was playing this game and i'm not even necessarily saying that i played badly it was just legitimately i was a little bit overwhelmed by playing in this way so it made for a really fun game but this is it i do lead off with my mill tank now mill tank still my kill leader i have to mention that every gosh dang game but uh I kind of felt like he would think that I would play my, my Miltank a little bit more passively, and Miltank was kind of an anti-lead against most things that he would want to lead off with. It at least gave me the best set of options against most things that he, that he wanted to lead off with. And more to the point, right? I think uh, Cherry here is a little bit in on the meme that I try to run the same kind of sandstorm mill tank every week and i kind of wanted to again kind of anti-lead a little bit kind of catch him th thinking that i was going to play this mill tank a little bit more passively this mill tank is has enough special attack to to hit a guard chomp most of the time right uh and here, you can see I barely miss out on it. It at least makes it a little bit of a dirty roll. But uh, this mill tank is also designed to take a plus two earthquake and a plus two adamant earthquake. Now, one thing that I didn't consider was whether or not it would be it would be life orbed. But apparently, those cows worked out where uh, I can take a plus two jolly life orbed EQ as well as a plus two adamant life orb. So I, I made it out of the first mon here uh relatively unscathed honestly garchomp could have just destroyed my team it could have torn through my entire team and he tried to take advantage i think of an early game passive mill tank by potentially assuming that i just wanted to get a brox i wanted to set up a sandstorm he fully wanted to take advantage of that uh but Again, this mill tank is meant to kind of do different things, and it held the line really, really well. In comes Silvali. Uh, I'm, I don't quite know what type this is. I don't know why I'm stuck on this screen so so much, but um, I did find out that it's a fighting type Silvali, and I'm trying to figure out what my kind of options here. I kind of do let the mill tank go down, only getting one KO. Unfortunate, I know. Um, unfortunately, I don't think mill tank is going to get up in that top 10 like it should have been it should have had at least one moment in the top 10 but uh alas we're here and the bigger point is to try to start to make things happen right because the big big elephant in the room type threat in that guard chomp is out of the way and now honestly i'm really starting to think that if i can set up webs and i can really start to make things happen with my and i can start to get things going with my pincer and my sand slash i think i'm in a really really good position to be able to make the to pick up ko's and start to get things going right regardless regardless uh it all starts with, with just getting up webs i'm gonna probably have to take a hit or at least give him some type of momentum here but most things that want to come in, I'll be able to Volt Switch out on. I'll be able to kind of manage a little bit decently. Although, it's going to be really tough if the Volcarona specifically wants to come in. Because I think I have to lock myself in a Rock Slide, which isn't great for a lot of the larger look of the match. Regardless, we're going to figure it out, right? In comes the Volcarona, which is not great for me. Uh, it does reveal to be Boots, because I did set up webs and uh, didn't affect. Which is fine. I, I, I think I even, I, I guess I even checked if I did set up webs. I don't know what that was about. But regardless, um, oh yeah, no, I I probably just checked to to make sure that uh, its stats didn't drop because again, it just reveals boots. But it does prompt me to just roll switch out here. I think I'm fine 
to just kind of feel out how he wants to play this. In comes the Savali again. But uh, this really does allow me to dictate a little bit of the tempo of this match. I don't recall what I go into here, but I'm sure it's something dope. Uh, I might just go into Seismitoad for some rocks and to try to... That's a super aggressive play on my part if I make that. I don't think I do. Um, I really do think I'm probably going into, into Seismitoad. I'd be surprised if I don't. But uh, I guess we'll see. I guess I'm trying to count, count how much damage EQ is doing. Uh, I guess I don't want to take the damage on Seismitoad, which makes sense to me, right? I probably don't want to take that much damage on the Seismitoad this early, especially when it can do some things against the... Against the... Uh, it can hold the line against the Sogaleo specifically. And it can kind of put me in a position vis a vis a lot of his stronger mods and just kind of put me in a decent position otherwise. And, and I know that I'll be able to take a hit even if this is a really strong Savali. Uh, I think I was calculating out if, I, if I'd be able to to two hit, which I does it does look like I do miss out on the two hit, but he parting shots out regardless. And uh, whatever he wants to go into is going to be a little bit dubious, but. Or, or, or at the very least, it's, I'm going to be in a good position vis-a-vis -vis whatever he wants to get, bring in here. Again, Volcarona is super duper scary. He doesn't know that I'm scarved yet, uh, which is which is good for me because he always has to respect a potential Stone Edge or a potential Rock Slide that can, uh, even at minus one, still kind of handle a Volcarona. So that's yeah, on the plus side for me. Let's go right into the Sogaleo. I think he's confident enough that he can kind of outspeed and just kind of deal a lot of damage. But uh, this is where I can reveal that I'm Scarf. Not affected by webs because of a uh, full metal body. But uh, this is kind of where I wanted to catch this thing off guard. Now, again, I'm running Calcs. And it it's looking like I don't quite two hit. Assuming that it's just like, I think it was, if it was just max HP, I don't quite two hit. But in the moment, this damage still felt relevant here especially because if this is more of a defensive Sogaleo then the damage output isn't that uh huge and I can potentially put myself in a position where I can um out damage this thing being at minus one does suck for the situation but it does feel like not insurmountable right this this um this situation precarious as it may be right uh, I do about 40%, which is more or less what I expected, but it's really going to be a, about gauging this uh, this Unseal Strike damage, and it just does a lot, right? So it doesn't look like I can out damage this, which is not great for me, which means I have to kind of improvise on the, in the moment, and I end up going into the size return. Now, this is important. This is a very important sequence, a very, very important sequence, important sequence alert happening, okay? Um... Goes for flame charge, all right. Obviously not great. I think he knows that I am that I am scarfed at this moment, which I don't know. Still doesn't make the most sense to go for the flame charge because you're still giving up another forty percent of your HP just to be able to KO me on the next turn when you could have just sent your strike again and KO'd me there. I don't know. A little bit dubious, but who knows? Especially if you assume that my sanitizer is going to be the scarfer. He doesn't know yet that I'm dual scarfed. However, 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 it's all thrown at the window. It's all moot. It's all irrelevant because he reveals power herb solar beam. Now, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, ah, surely I take one, right? Um, but turns out I don't. It's just uh, it just does a lot of damage. This could be like some kind of naive nature solar. I don't know, man. It's kind of in crazy to me how much damage that did. I would not have expected that to go in any capacity. Um, but it did. I mean, I don't know what to say about that. It just did. Uh, in any case, we're here. And uh, I go out into the Drapion. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure why I went out into the Drapion. But regardless, uh, I could just get a knockoff. I wish it was silly of me because I know that it already uh, used up its item. Night Slash was the better play here. For it, it does more damage and has the high crit ratio, so that was always going to be the better play. But I don't know, man. It was a weird play on my part. I don't think I was in the right headspace. I mean, again, I hopefully mentioned this earlier, but I just woken up, and uh, it was definitely not the proper headspace for me to be playing this game. 
And uh, it definitely showed, again, in this very important sequence. We are still in a very, very important sequence. It's like when you enter a child zone, we're in very important sequence zone here, right? Uh, in any case, I do a lot of damage to the Sogaleo. I'm just, I still get two hit back. So, what I think the Sogaleo is, I don't even think I looked after the game. Or if we even exchanged pace, I don't even remember. Um, but this is looking to be like something like max HP really strong attack because it, it's just two hitting everything it's more than two hitting everything and it's just taking a bunch of hits right which is not great but i have to give up my drake on here as well and uh despite still being in this very important sequence uh i just go down and again letting it get up that flame charge is just looking worse and worse for me here in this specific scenario because i still have to take a lot of damage from a Sunsteel Strike, and I, do, and I do get to KO it back, and get a buff Moxie boost here, but, um, I really didn't have to give up as much as I did to get to this point, right? And, I don't know, it, it's not, like, the biggest deal in the world, I, I think this is, uh, surmountable, but, uh, it just didn't feel great in the moment, right? It didn't... It, it, it went from not, again, from the starting point of not, of not feeling in the proper headspace to feeling like I'm in a hole that I kind of need to dig myself out of, which again, is not impossible, right? This doesn't feel like an undig out of, undig out of a hole, but uh, again, it just doesn't feel great, right? So he can bring in anything he wants. Volcarona is obviously super scary. Uh, he doesn't know anything about this pincer because pincer here is is uh scarfs but the soul layer was a plus one because of flame charge does bring in the volcarona so potentially i lose if it quiver dances here but uh the other side of it is if i if i am able to to like crit an earthquake here then that's great for me <laughs> i don't know um regardless he's kind of forced to kill me here or at the very least this is an easy ko for him to take if he wants it and and honestly again yeah he doesn't know that i'm scarfed in this moment so if he does do if he does try to cover dance i can easily just rock slide pick up a ko he doesn't know that yet uh this is where i do reveal my second scarf and i'm able to uh do a lot of damage with this thing truthfully i needed to be a plus two uh you can tell by that damage i needed to be a plus two just to be able to truly truly ko here but uh yeah it just wasn't great if i it, okay it's also obvious that the design of this kind of pincer was to try to get to plus two or have prior damage onto the Volcarona. And you can see it didn't even take that much prior damage. If I had a little bit of prior damage or if I got to plus two, then um, pincer really is in prime position to, to tear through the team a little bit. Obviously, it depends on a lot still. But here, I'm really trying to think through is Thunder a worthy risk to go for? also going to be important for later so we are out of the important sequence zone but this is still uh the the every decision from here on out is going to be important to at least try to like claw my way back into a respectable position here i can pick this thing off with the thunder we get out of this situation okay but uh it's not looking great for your boy and in any case i want to go back to that very important sequence where uh, really, I switched out of my sand slash because in my head I was so I was very very tunnel visioned into the idea that uh, sand slash was going to be important for the end game because sand slash could tear through the team. It could do a lot in the end game. It goes for the aqua jet, which uh, Galvatula is actually bulky enough to take two, which was dope in my mind. However, however, uh, it was a little bit of a choke on his part. He could have gone for a liquidation into an Aqua Jet and never been too KO'd by my Galvantula. But by going for, for Aqua Jet, it allowed me to take two. And it actually allows me to um, to uh, potentially win this game from here, right? Because now I'm in a position where I can kind of play around his final two mons. Goes into Silvali here. It goes into Zobali, and I miss a Thunder, which is crazy, because I'm going to go for another Thunder, and 
you guys will see that there was a couple of consecutive chokes here that just happened he choked initially by going for an aqua jet because it allowed me to, to be able to hit the the azumarill but then he switched out into Sovali, and potentially if I'd landed two thunders in a row, then this would have gone down. If he brings in the Gengar, then I can Vol switch out into the in, into the Sand Slash, sack off the Sand Slash, bring Galvangela back in, and um and click Thunder for, to KO the Gengar. At which point, Last Mon is going to be the Azumarill. I can take an Aqua Jet, uh, Volt switch on the Azumarill and KO, and that is my ultimate path to victory. I win straight up if I land, if if he chokes by clicking Aqua Jet, and I land two Thunders, uh, I should have won this end game. But again, it probably should have never come to this point because going back to the very important sequence, like, I'm, and I promise I'm gonna finish my point this time because uh, I've already gone through this end game. You guys can already tell I'm gonna lose this end game, but I want to talk about the very important sequence so I can finish my thought anyway basically I, I had a tunnel vision that my sand slash was going to be important for the end game so i should preserve it which ended up costing me both my drapeon and my seismitoad but if i had just given up my sand slash in that moment i could bring in the pincer which is what i had to do anyway take the hit ko back with, with an earthquake and then i'm putting on the same pressure literally the the same thing basically happens that I did in the actual game, except I just have Seismitoad and Drapion for this end game, which I clearly needed. I think with those two mons, I think I have all the tools that I need to, to close out this game naturally and not leave it down to missing a Thunder, a compound eyes Thunder that I should have landed. But uh, that's just kind of how the game ended, right? I truly do believe that if I had made that proper call and I just given up the Sand Slash, but in exchange for giving up the Sand Slash, I just have Seismitoad and Drapion chilling in the back for an endgame situation, then I truly believe that I have all the tools that I need to win the game. As it stands, I kind of choked by trying to preserve the Sand Slash, especially when I knew that he had an Azumarill that can easily just pick off the Sand Slash whenever it needed to. So that was really bad on my part. However, 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 uh, then Cherry choked in exchange. He opened the door for me a little bit, which means that I ended up losing the game on what I believe is what, like a 7% chance to miss, to miss, uh, actually, no, I, if I remember correctly, Compound Eyes brings Thunder's accuracy up to 91%, is that right? So it might have been a 9% chance to miss, but regardless, that missed Thunder was what cost me the game after Cherry choked a little bit, um, but again, we both played this game very late. I was I just fallen asleep. It's gonna be kinda how the game ends. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UPBA. Well, at least one more week. Potentially more weeks, depending on what happens. But uh with that, once again, once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be once again. Okay.